It's another very beautiful Thursday morning clockwork from our studio. It's exactly 11 o'clock and I welcome you to the issues on IKD 106.1 FM. If you are conversant with the radio station, you would know that today being a Thursday is another very good day to talk about our health. Uh, as they say, health is wealth and that is why we have decided that every Thursday morning from 11 up until 12 on the issues, uh, we have our conversations drawn across uh, health matters. This is in line with uh, General Hospital Ikorodu, uh, where we together we do this every Thursday. You're welcome to the issues today. And today our focus will be on tuberculosis, what you need to know. My name is Opayemi Ade Bambo. You can also be part of this conversation by joining us from anywhere all over the world via our website www.ikd. 1061fm.ng. We are also very much available on Radio Garden IKD 1061fm. Again, I welcome you to the issues on IKD 106.1fm. Like I said today on the issues, we will talk about this deadly disease called tuberculosis. Uh, you may want to ask the question, how deadly uh, is TB tuberculosis? Uh, for the records, I should put you through this, that uh, a total of about 1.6 million people died from tuberculosis in the year 2021 and this is a worldwide record however tuberculosis happens to be the 13th leading cause of death and of course the third uh, leading infectious killer after covid 19 you would agree with me that definitely tuberculosis is very very dangerous that is why the ministry of health warns that smokers are liable to die young but unfortunately it seems as if uh, the message uh, from the ministry of health is not uh, transmitting into the minds of the people especially the young ones and that is why today we would have a conversation on tuberculosis to join me with this conversation is a doctor from general hospital we could do uh, she's a consultant public health physician in person of Dr. Yetunde Odusolu. Together we would have this conversation. So all you need to do is sit back, relax, learn, uh, be educated on the issues today while we talk about this deadly uh, tuberculosis that has infected and of course destroyed a lot of young's life out there. Again, I welcome you to the issues. A very short breather would suffice. When I return, we get talking. Good morning, Nigeria. You're welcome back to the issues on IKD 106.1 FM. During the course of the conversation, you can call in uh, to ask questions. I have my doctor in the studio who will do justice to whatsoever questions you have uh, to ask in person of Dr. Yetunde Odusolo. Just like I told you before that short break, that she happens to be a consultant, public health uh, physician from Ikorodu General Hospital. And together we would have this conversation on tuberculosis. What you need to know, Dr. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's good to have you again in the studio. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us. Yes, so today I want us to talk about uh, this uh, tuberculosis. Some call it TB. Uh, a lot of persons out there no longer see the dangers around tuberculosis. As a medical practitioner, how best can you define tuberculosis? If I ask you, what is tuberculosis? Well, I would define tuberculosis as an um, infectious disease. Mm. Is one of the major communicable diseases of public health concern, and it is caused by a bacteria uh, called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Mm. So that's why uh, tuberculosis is usually gotten when a person coughs or sneezes or laughs or things, and they release those bacteria into the air. Mm. It means of setting the air, and when somebody else inhales it or breathes it in. Then, of course, through some processes, you know, it may be there are stages. Mm. So later, it be start manifesting in the body, and the person manifests with symptoms of like cough. The mm. cough is like a a cough that is prolonged, okay. maybe lasting for two to three weeks. Then they manifest with uh, weight loss, fever, malaise, you know, and of course, it because the tuberculosis is just like a, a, it's like. When we say tuberculosis, there are two types. Mm. We have the ones that affect the lungs, and we have the ones that is you know, affects other parts of the body. We call it extra pulmonary. Mm. So that's how I just describe tuberculosis. Okay, uh, we will still definitely go to uh, the types of tuberculosis. Yeah. We would also talk about the causes, the symptoms, yeah, exactly. and thereabouts. Uh, but then, uh, to continue the conversation, I want you to tell us, especially those out there that are listening to you at this time, how bad. Can tuberculosis be? How deadly, how dangerous is tuberculosis? The reason for this question, Dr. Yetunde, is because some people will just tell you that 
Is it not just tuberculosis? <laughs> uh, some people do not even know. They can't even tell how terrible tuberculosis is. With your wealth of experience uh, in this field, tell us how bad tuberculosis can be. Uh, tuberculosis is a very <laughs> deadly disease mm. because uh, in Nigeria, it has been said, it responds for about 10% 10, 10 of deaths mm. in Nigeria. So True. you can imagine all causes of mortality. Tuberculosis mm. accounting for 10% of all kinds of deaths. Mm. So it's a very dangerous disease. And it has been said that even every hour, 30 people die, you know, uh, of tuberculosis. That means in two every minutes. Hour. Yes, 30 wow. people are here. Yes, that means every two, two minutes, you know, somebody, somebody is dying of tuberculosis. Mm. So, and of course in Nigeria, 245,000 people have currently said to you know to have died of tuberculosis you know every year mm. and of course maybe over 500,000 are infected with the tuberculosis so mm. it's a dangerous disease all over the world is a disease of public importance that mm. even even Nigeria is said to be the leading cause of exactly. mortality of tuberculosis exactly exactly yeah. you know because when I, I I took my time to do some research earlier this morning uh, looking at tuberculosis and I discovered that Nigeria is leading when you talk about the rate at which Nigeria produces the number of um, uh, tuberculosis uh, persons and it's so sad even in Africa worldwide all over the world Nigeria t tops the table it is very very terrible this will bring me to my next question that when we say tuberculosis Tuberculosis uh, is tuberculosis contagious? Is it something that uh, one could actually get from someone, or it's not actually contagious? Well, when you say something is contagious, that means it, it, the thing is communicable. Yeah. Actually, when you decide this, the diseases are divided into two types. You say non-communicable diseases and communicable diseases. diseases. Non-communicable means that you cannot contact it from somebody. Mm. Maybe like hypertension, DM, cancer. But for TB, it's a communicable disease because the person cause and release the bacteria into the air. So anybody that is in that kind of environment that inhales that air, the tobacco bacilli, mm. you know, the person can get infected. So it's a contagious and we say it's communicable. Somebody mm. can get it from some, it can be spread from one person to another. So that means if one has somebody who has tuberculosis, mm. there are tendencies that if the person is not careful, the person can also uh, Yes, have so if you're having prolonged contact with somebody that has the tuberculosis, uh, uh, tuberculosis and you are not taking on any preventive measures, you mm. can always contact and get the tuberculosis. Very good. So we will talk about the preventive measures. But before then, I want us to, while I was also taking my uh, uh, time to do research, I saw some medical terms that I got lost at a point when I was looking at the types of uh, <laughs> tuberculosis and all of that. So I, the terms are so complicated, I'll tell you. So tell us, do we have types of tuberculosis? Please tell us the types of tuberculosis that we have and um, how it looks like the differences between these tuberculosis. Well, like I said earlier, we have two main types. We have the pulmonary tuberculosis, which is the one that is affecting, affecting the lungs. Mm. So the person, of course, they manifest with cough and all the other symptoms I mentioned, fever, weight loss, malaise. Sometimes they even cough out blood because it affects the vessels inside the lungs. Mm. Then we have the one that is called the extra pulmonary tuberculosis. This one is a form of tuberculosis that is disseminated through the blood and it affects every other part of the body mm. from the head maybe to the toe. So it affects the brain causing tuberculosis meningitis and this is really common in children. Mm. That's why we even recommend that children, when at, well, once they are delivered on the day of delivery, they give them BCD vaccine to mm. prevent them from coming down with tuberculosis. It can also affect the uh, the gastrointestinal system, the genitourinary system, manifesting symptoms of uh, of disease of disorders in those systems. Mm. Can affect the bones, can affect the spine. There's what we call the TB spine. Wow. You know the persons, the 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 vertebrae of the, the back, or the bone of the spine, they collapse. You know sometimes the person will have maybe protrusion of the at the back. You know mm. the person may not be even able to walk. It can affect the uh, woman causing infertility. Mm. Uh, it can affect uh, the ovaries, the testes. Mm. You know it can affect very really part of the body, even the lymph nodes. Something the, the lymph nodes are the organs that filtrates. You know they are like the immune system of the body. So once it affects them. It can have swelling and all those things. Mm. So it can affect different parts of the body. Mm. 
Uh, you know, when 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 you were talking about it, you talked about children. I know, I know for a fact that tuberculosis can actually affect adults, both male and female. But then, when you say children, can children also be infected with uh, tuberculosis? Yes, that's why when you're talking about, you know, when you're talking about uh, immunization of children, mm. the only vaccine that is that you give to a child, you know, that is usually compulsory, especially in Nigeria here. Yeah. Once you deliver a child, day of birth, day zero of birth, you have to give the child BCG. There's another one we call it hepatitis, but this one BCG mm. vaccine is a common vaccine that's given to children at the first day of birth. Though they can collect it later if they miss it, okay. but it's usually given because those children, babies, they are exposed to other adults, you no know, other adults in the community mm. that can be coughing, releasing the bacteria. Into Especially the, when the baby yes. is born, they want to say yes, congratulations yes. and all so, that. But we want to prevent the children from having mm. other forms of uh, uh, dangerous TB, like mm. the TB meningitis of the brain and other parts of the body, aside from the uh, PT, pulmonary TB, the one that affects the lungs. So oh. that's why we give the children BCG vaccine. Okay, I hope I won't get lost with all of this uh, <laughs> medical terms. Uh, but then, but then, I think I, I understand that to some extent. Now, we know that one major symptom of tuberculosis is cough. Yeah. Uh, the person gets to cough. But then, sometimes, some people cough even without having tuberculosis. So, I want us to carefully, uh, one by one, look at some of the symptoms of tuberculosis because coughing alone cannot be said that okay you have tuberculosis of which we know that coughing is part of the symptoms of tuberculosis so how can one tell that oh this is tuberculosis what i see right now is tuberculosis what are the symptoms when we talk about tuberculosis well and uh, like i said you know the tuberculosis affecting the lungs usually manifest with somebody coughing the cough is not the typical kind of cough okay the cough you know is a cough that is prolonged the okay. cough they usually cough more at night, you okay. know, and the cough lasts maybe two or three weeks. That even after the person, the person may have been taking medications, and the cough is not responding to treatment. Mm. So you say that okay, this cough is likely to be TB, and of course we can't just say it's only cough alone because there are other things that are making somebody to be coughing for a long time. Yeah. But when we now have other symptoms with it, like the person is having weight loss, if with loss that weight loss that you cannot even explain the cause of it, it's not as if the person is going on a diet, but mm. the person just discovering that ah, I'm just losing. Weight. The weight loss yeah. can still even occur even when you're eating well. Uh, yes, the person wow. is just uh, losing weight, you know, unintentional weight loss. Then mm. the person is having what we call fever. The fever may be low grade. It's not as if it's severe fever like that. Mm. Okay? But then the person will also have what we call sweating at night excessive night sweat they will be sweating at night mm. so the trend we even drench them sometimes we feel like this person is likely to be tb mm. then they also have malay weakness they may have loss of appetite and depending on the other size of the body that the thing is affecting they may manifest symptoms related to that particular side of the body so it's casterically when we say somebody has tb you will, and you must ask these three questions is the person coughing is the cough lasting for more than two to three weeks is the person having weight loss is the person having fever is the person having night sweat when you have those um symptoms they are usually how would i say you know, so they're not, they're not what we call medically pathognomonic we say okay mm. this means that it is likely to be tb Mm. Yeah. So the the major symptoms to look out for is when you talk about uh, coughing, weight loss, fever, night sweats. Mm. These are major symptoms that shows that oh, this is most likely to be uh, tuberculosis. If you're just joining us today on the issues, uh, we are talking about tuberculosis. Everything that you need to know about tuberculosis today, we will discuss this on the issues, and that is why we have uh, Doctor Yetunde Odusolu from General Hospital Ikorodu uh, talking about tuberculosis and how then uh, you can prevent them. But before we even get to the preventive measures and all, you can also have the opportunity to call in uh, on the studio line. You can also send in text messages or WhatsApp messages to our studio line zero nine zero four zero eight two. 1061 that is for text messages or whatsapp messages 09040821061 to call in you can call our studio line 09080 dr yutunde i want us to look at uh, uh smoking when you tell somebody that uh, tuberculosis is here the first thing that comes to somebody's head is the person is a smoker 
in most cases, when you tell somebody that there is a disease called tuberculosis, they just feel, oh, it is for smokers. Especially, there is a ringtone that comes from the Ministry of Health. Smokers are liable to die young, and that death is that of uh, the lungs that is affected by tuberculosis. So tell us, aside smoking, do we have any other uh, 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 major uh, cause? I'm talking about the causes of tuberculosis now that brings about tuberculosis aside smoking. What are the causes of tuberculosis? Okay, mm-hmm. not the smoking that affects that causes because TB is caused by the bacteria. Okay. It's just that if the person is now infected with the bacteria, the smoking worsens it and makes it maybe the disease to manifest earlier mm. because it reduces the person's immunity. Also, some other diseases that you know some people can have anything that can decrease the immune system of a person can make the person prone more to having tuberculosis. Like people that have HIV, AIDS, they are more prone to having TB. They, even if there's something that we call HIV TB co-infection like a twin infection mm. somebody that have hiv they are prone to tb mm. we call it an opportunistic infection so tb hiv they exist together and it's very common it will never say that maybe out of one of every person that has hiv they will always develop tb mm. yes then also people that have diabetes mellitus it's also a disease that also reduces the immune system people that have cancer then people that may be elderly people that may be cause of their, their immunity are decreasing as they are aging mm. and children too because their immunity are not so strong you know mm. they are prone to tuberculosis mm. yeah so so uh, uh, just to be clear according to you you are saying now that uh, smoking is not the real essence of the real cause mm. of tuberculosis but it actually aids uh, tuberculosis because yes. the mindset is a lot of people will believe that the reason why he or she has tuberculosis is because he's a smoker uh, or she's a smoker okay uh, that is clear so now we should talk about uh, 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 when we say tuberculosis has there been any case where we know that this person has tuberculosis and then it vanishes even without any medical uh, help no medical aid uh, before we attend to that question I would like us to take this call hello to you um, good afternoon yes good afternoon good morning yes, actually yes. still in the morning good morning oh, sorry good yes, morning yes. yes good morning um, the name is Larry yes I'm calling you from Victoria. good morning Mr. Larry yeah, I'm doc- Good morning, ma. Good morning. Our doctor has actually said a lot of things on TV. Mm. But there are some things she omitted. Okay. Because I was once a TV patient as well. Okay. And um, when you ask her about um, if TV is a problem, um, I think you said if it's a problem, this is. I need to, I need yes, to get yeah. you clear. I need to get you clear. There's, there's a part that you ask. Okay. That is TV contagious? Hmm. There's a part that she omitted. See, um, if a TB patient spits on the ground mm. and it's dry, people in that area, within that vicinity, has a, um, a tendency of catching this disease. And most times, um, because TB is very as deadly as it is, it's very smart and it likes to be um, in an hygiene environment. Most times, when people cough, they cough into an envelope. Mm. Uh, sorry, into a tissue paper. Mm. And most times you see them spinning this tissue uh, this handkerchief. Mm. It mm. may be in the bus or in a gathering and they will be spinning this uh, handkerchief. Now, for a TB patient, coughing into an handkerchief is good, but immediately after you get to your house, mm. one people is eyes out the toy so that you can keep all the jumps. But you find that people inside party they see this thing in it. Then that if other people are within that party or mm. within that gathering, they are prone to it as well. That's how great the TB is. Mm. So I just want to point Yes, thank you. But well, definitely, well. we're still going to get there on I, how I it spreads. Right. Yes. I, I'm yes. still living some other part. Yes. I'm yes. waiting for the other population. Part. All right. So okay. I'm still with you guys. Thank yes. You very thank you much. very much. Thank you very much. Let's take another call before we go ahead. Hello to you. Hello, sir. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Your name, please, and where you're calling us from. Mr. Alad Bula Stamper from Nikurubi. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Uh, apart from smoking, I get my doctor there. Okay. Apart from smoking, how can somebody defend himself? Not they don't carry this disease. That's what I want to know. I need to get your question straight. How can one defend? Defend himself, not to look at the disease. Okay, preventive measures. We are going to get there. That's what I want to know. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lastapa. Okay, uh, that's that's fine. I don't know if you have anything to say about the two calls before we proceed. 
Uh, well, the, the first caller was saying that I know I enumerate about uh, maybe somebody spitting into the ground and then... Yes, saliva. Yeah, yeah saliva. <laughs> uh, well, the thing is, the main mode of it is that you, you are releasing the bacteria into the air. Mm. So, for somebody coughing into the air, maybe the air, of course, for a person that is having active TB, okay. the person spitting into the air, maybe it gets dried up and maybe wind, true wind or whatever, the bacteria are blown it's into the out. air. Of course, the same, the same method is that you are inhaling that bacteria mm. uh, uh, that is the main method of getting the tb you are inhaling it it's not as if a uh, true touch or whatever mm. if you are inhaling that it is uh, by inhaling uh, yes yes mm. uh, you know sometimes ago when in the bacteria uh, you know sometimes it was said that uh, w- for instance covid 19 mm. uh, it is said that the 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 the, the virus uh, stands for a little period of time it was said that from a particular minute to a particular minute is that also same with tuberculosis that uh, uh, bacteria or for bacteria called tuberculosis that brings about tuberculosis it can stand in the air for as long as possible yes. how long does it last well from research you said it can be suspended in the air for up, lasting up to three to four months in the air months yes in the air so wow and of course for you to be at risk it's not as if it must have been that you have been in that environment for a long time and prolonged contact mm. that means you have been breathing it continuously mm. so it's not you cannot just as if you are not just they're walking inside the um, where people uh, are and you just uh, because you are walking and then boom it uh, jumps you know, on you not like that mm. you know it's more having a prolonged contact that you know because you know when you're talking about infection there's a dose of infection that we is responsible responsible for causing an infection mm. so we have been exposed to something that will be able to trigger that infection in your body so at least the person would have been there for some time um, yes. the person would have inhaled yes. to some particular point before yes. the person can be yes. okay so I, w- I was asking the other time that when we talk about uh tuberculosis has there been cases whereby or oh, has there been any miraculous case uh, you know where somebody would just tell you that i had tuberculosis not 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 in terms of uh, the the religious side now could someone have tuberculosis? Let me put it in that way. Could someone have tuberculosis and just without any medical treatment, tuberculosis will go by itself? Is it possible? Well, for somebody that has been diagnosed medically, mm. uh, to have tuberculosis, it cannot go medically. It can, it must, TB can be prevented, it can be treated, and it can be cured. So mm. it's not as if you just not take anything and the TB will go like that. No, like I said, there are three stages of TB. There's what we call the primary stage, when you breathe in the bacteria. Mm. So most of us here, yeah, we are exposed to the bacteria. It may be lying inside our lungs, just dormant, lying down like that. Mm. So when it comes to a time, it becomes a, a, a time, it, be, it, be, it starts creating infection in the body mm. or called the latent infection stage mm. you know so that person may just have tb and is not manifesting all those signs or symptoms but when the person now gets to the third stage which is called the active tb stage okay. the person starts manifesting all those symptoms of cough fever weight loss and all those things so people may have latent tb and they will not be manifesting anything in those cases of course it's until you test them that you can pick them mm. so those ones <laughs> but for somebody that has been diagnosed with active tb you cannot wish it away. You have to be treated, mm. you know, uh, before you can be cured. Mm. You cannot just say that I, the TB just went like that. Mm. <laughs> I like the fact that I say you cannot just say the TB just went like that. So I would ask you this next question mm. before we talk about preventive measures, mm. uh, so we could actually prevent uh, tuberculosis properly. Uh, and when we talk about someone who has tuberculosis, this person had tuberculosis. The good thing about tuberculosis is it can be cured unlike some other diseases. Mm. Now, tuberculosis is cured. Mm. Like our first caller just said that he once had tuberculosis. Does that actually open door for such a person to have tuberculosis at any time? You know, there are some diseases they will tell you that it has been cured, but then you have to be careful. Don't eat this, don't eat that, so it will not come back. Is that same applicable to tuberculosis or when it is gone, it is gone except you inhale again? You cannot develop immunity against tuberculosis. It's by some viral infections that you may have and you may not have them again. Maybe you say you have measles, you don't have it again. Uh-huh, exactly. But for TB, like it's a bacterial infection. Mm. It can be reinfected again. Wow. Or you can have the bacteria being reactivated again. Your so there is nothing like I've overgrown tuberculosis. Yes, so that means you have to prevent yourself from getting it. You know, you can be reinfected. Because mm. there are some strains of the tuberculosis vaccine that the person may have. If the person now have start manifesting those symptoms again, we say that TB is reactivated in that person. So mm. maybe the person needs to be treated again. But there are some people, they will not get exposed to other strains of that bacteria again. Mm. We say this person is reinfected. 
again. Mm. So there is reinfection, there is reactivation. There is reinfection, there is reactivation. Yes, for people that have TB before, I mean, we are talking about somebody that has previous TB. Yes, person can have reactivated TB or can be reinfected. Mm. Yes. Mm. Okay, so now let's talk about the major focus for today. How can we prevent? tuberculosis it's a killer disease and it spreads so fast it has killed a lot of persons as i speak with you some persons are out there suffering from uh, tuberculosis how then can others that are not infected already how can they prevent this deadly disease called tuberculosis well the first thing is to maintain good cough etiquette because like i said it's, it's true maybe major literal coughing talking you know releasing it but so maintaining good cough etiquette we ask people that have the tb to make sure that you know when they are coughing maybe they cough into tissue it's something that they can dispose easily not even handkerchief like the first caller was saying mm. it's not handkerchief this cough into a tissue and you dispose it off immediately mm. uh, so that you know you don't keep spreading the disease then of course you can also prevent it by you know somebody if you are uh, avoiding overcrowded places okay overcrowding overcrowding has also been said to be a risk factor you know people, people that live in maybe in facilities boarding prison in all the places where people are crowded together mm. you can foster the spread of tuberculosis mm. so avoid overcrowding then ensure that there is ventilation fresh air when you are when you have maybe somebody that has to be around you make sure there is or in the house make sure that you expose there is no ventilation in the house mm. you know then of course uh, sunlight you know all those things will prevent you from having tb then of course you need to maintain good hygiene you know washing of hands it's not as if uh, you get it through the hands but at least maintaining good hygiene all the time mm. like the person was talking about spitting people just spitting around make sure you don't just spit around you know those are the ways of preventing tuberculosis mm. that is for that is for people that do not have it yet yet yes. those are the ways of preventing tuberculosis mm. uh good uh, uh cough etiquettes uh for uh persons that do not have it of course you also talked about overcrowded places now when you talk about that overcrowded places uh, that is where i have a little uh question to ask you know sometimes we cannot avoid some places like the marketplace uh religious uh, centers churches mocks and uh, workplace sometimes and we might never can tell who is who uh, who has tuberculosis in that case what are we supposed to do mm. so a place where you are having overcrowding consistently persistently and you are staying in that kind of environment mm. then and if somebody has to be in that place then of course you may pick it may breathe in it but if you just traveling in a transport you know maybe your breast may be overcrowded you know if air is blowing in yes. your you'll be catching tb like that mm. so it's the overcrowding that is continuous and persistent mm. that can expose you to that bacilla in the air for a long time that you can breathe in him that is the overcrowding we are talking about avoiding and then allowing uh, ventilation yes, where you yeah, are yeah, so yeah, that allowing not... ventilation yes okay so so now let's talk about how we can manage tuberculosis zero nine zero four zero eight one one zero six one or zero nine zero four zero eight two one zero six one is the studio line where you can call and ask questions if at all you have any uh, today when we talk about uh, tuberculosis with my doctor dr yetunde odusolu consultant public health physician from general hospital ikorodu you can also send in text messages or whatsapp messages to zero nine zero four zero eight two one zero six one so dr yetunde tell us how can we manage uh, tuberculosis now this is for persons that are already uh, living with uh, tuberculosis how can it be managed uh, when somebody is diagnosed to be having to be there are different tests that we do okay. usually to determine that somebody has tuberculosis the person is coughing you know having weight loss and all those symptoms <laughs> then mm. of course you test the person first you can do a chest history the chest okay. history can reveal whether the lungs have the affectation of the lungs you know you can pick it up through and there's a specialized x-ray that we even have now they call it cat 4 tb which is a special x-ray that is used to detect lesions people that have tuberculosis lesions mm. so you can start them on treatment mm. then we also have what we call the sputum test uh, the sputum test is like the patient who has to be coughed into maybe a container and they, okay. are, they, are, they are now test that sputum. It can be a bacteriological test, which is called a culture, you know, to culture whether the bacteria is, res is present in that sputum. Then we also have this advanced molecular test, we call gene expert test. Mm. We have machines that do that. You know, that one is even fast. You know, we can pick uh, TB cases earlier. You can even pick resistant TB cases because we have uh, some of the uh, people that have TB now developing resistant TB. 
you know the resistant, resistant TB. To, the resistant to the drugs. The, we have some drugs that are used to treat TB. Okay. We have the first line drugs. Okay. So we have some people that are resistant to those first line drugs, majorly mm. the isoniazid and rifampicin, one of the two major drugs that are used to treat TB. So if people have that kind of resistant TB, that molecular mm. test can also pick it. They help you to differentiate people that have the ones that are drug susceptible. That means they are sensitive to the first line drugs mm. from the one that have resistance ones mm. so that you know because there are different treatments regimen for managing uh, different the different types of tb that we have okay. so the, for the drugs susceptible ones we give them the first line drugs for the mm. ones that are resistant then we have some advanced drugs some of them are even toxic that are used to treat the multi-drug they call it multi-drug resistant tb mdr okay uh, so uh, and that's how you treat uh, those ones okay and then of course there's also what we call the extensive drug resistance that one is even more dangerous mm. we, I, though i've not seen somebody that has that one but we heard it that they have this extent extensive drug resistance tb2 mm. so that means they are resistant to even the drugs that are being used for the multi-drug resistant tb wow. then uh, of course the treatment for tb is usually drugs are usually given for six months six months yes it's usually for six months mm. when we have the once the, there's a first phase which we call the intensive phase mm. last doctor about, please pardon me let me take yes. another call i don't want to ignore of this calls. hello okay. to you hello good morning yes good morning yeah my own name is sabeki calling from the biologia talk to me sabeki you see i've just uh on my radio set now and, and i hear you people discussing about to call you tuberculosis. tuberculosis yes please my first question is this uh, tobacco uh, tuberculosis uh, disease does it come from cigarette or where did it come from and that was uh, uh, first one the second one is somebody was telling me recently that if you use the spoon at somebody that have uh, tuberculosis mm. that uh, you know uh, you might got if, if if you use the stone did I get that spoon, correct spoon. spoon okay spoon yeah, this point. Mm, those are your two questions. Yes. Uh, my doctor will please attend to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, although the first question has been attended to, but then for the benefit of him just joining, uh, you can just attend to the two questions. Well, tuberculo uh, tuberculosis is gotten through uh, a bacteria called Mycobacterium tuberculosis, and the bacteria that bacteria is coughed into the hair. Mm. So when a person in use of breathing the hair, having that bacteria, the person can become infected with tuberculosis. Mm. So not the method that he he, he was saying uh, the person can get through it through spoon. Uh, and, uh, no, through spoon. You cannot get it through spoon. I just mm. you I want uh, somebody. The people are always afraid that you know because they ask them to spit exactly. Out spoon I, I, I know I know of cases where that, they would just yeah, tell uh, somebody uh, living with tuberculosis uh, that they would need to even relocate the person, go and start staying alone for like uh, some months until you are cured and you're fine. I believe that that one is a form of stigma or discrimination. Usually, you want people that have TB want to isolate them. Mm. For people that have active stage of the infection, mm. maybe maybe for one or two weeks, when we start them on treatment. After starting them on treatment, and of course you test their sputum, and you find that that the bacteria is no longer present in their sputum, they are free to live in the environment with other people it's not as if you will not be discriminating or be stigmatizing them mm. uh, just go and stay maybe for away for that prolonged time but maybe for one or two weeks we need to isolate them so mm. that they don't infect others mm. but no it's not something that you do for a long time mm. another question from mm. the caller is talked about uh, uh is smoking the major reason for tuberculosis we've attended yes, that yes. but but i think you still need to enlighten me a little uh, bit yes i said that smoking is not a cause or is a risk factor because it can re reduce the person's immunity making the person prone to anything that can reduce person's immunity person that is not even eating well malnutrition mm. people that have poverty they cannot even afford one uh, uh, one meal not mm. less of three square meal <laughs> you know all those <laughs> things that can cause the immune system to be depressed mm. they can make the person prone to having tuberculosis mm. okay. okay okay so we're talking about how we can manage tuberculosis yes. and you were talking about uh, uh the methods as which you can treat them mm. we started up with uh, the test x-rays and all of that and mm. then you talk about medication please go ahead with that uh, how one can manage tuberculosis uh, well, yes i like i said i said uh, there's the uh, I said there are two phases when in the six months yes. there's what we call the intensive phase. Mm. This intensive phase involves that you want to give the person the drugs in there are some there are about four drugs. Okay. So they are giving the person, starting the person on those four drugs on mm. the intensive phase. Mm. And the person will be taking the dr drug daily. 
let me also say that for treatment of tuberculosis, mm. the treatment is called directly observed therapy. When you are giving the person drugs, you make sure that the person is taking the drug in front of you, the mm. healthcare provider. Mm. So you, for those intensive phase, the person come to the health facility or any community or center close to them. Mm. They will make sure that they take the drug in front of. Is them. there any reason to that? You want to en- you want to prevent resistance. You want to make sure they are taking the drugs. Mm. You know, so because if they don't take the drugs, they can build up resistance and they can even keep on spreading the disease. Okay. So we want to ensure that they are taking the drugs. Mm. So they take the drug for the first two months then they now continue the intensive phase with two drugs maybe as an other than rifampicin for this next four months mm. but along the line they will be testing them mm. to see that you know they are they are not they are no longer infectious maybe that mm. they are not they test their sputum mm. maybe at the by the first the end to the um, by the a week to the end of the the uh, six months uh, the, no the first, the first four two, two months, months okay they will test their sputum okay by when it is about five months again they will test their sputum maybe finally when they are finished the six months they will test them again that they are no longer infected so you're saying it's possible converted. you're saying it's possible for one to be treated cured of a uh, uh, diabetes uh, yeah, uh, tuberculosis be. rather mm. uh, before that six months of treatment yeah, is that they are no longer infectious uh, they're okay. no longer able to spread the okay. vaccine okay. Like. but okay. the treatment is for six months because tuberculosis has been found to be a disease that you know is highly hard and resistant to infect uh, to drugs mm. so you need to treat for a long time to ensure that the person is properly treated so it has to be six months yes yes then even for the multi-drug resistance mm. previously it was okay well they are still practicing some some the treatment can last for even nine months to one year or 20 months mm. depending on how the degree of uh, uh, maybe the sensitivity or whatever they are picked you know from that person but WHO recently are saying that you know because you know the pill body taking drug for a long time mm. so they are trying to reduce that one also to six months that people are meant to drug resistance they can take the drug for six months mm-hmm. but they are special drugs because some of those drugs they are very toxic and so uh, that's why tuberculosis is very deadly you find that many people that are even on the treatment is there the only 45 percent that usually survive it some end up dying Mm. Yes, seventy-five percent. No, forty-five percent. Forty-five percent cured, and some because of that TB, mm. eventually they may it may result to death. Wow, you they don't okay. Uh, you were talking about uh, how to treat and how to manage uh, this deadly disease, tuberculosis, and I am I'm tempted to ask you that uh, how expensive can it be to treat? tuberculosis you talked about some drugs and all of that if, without mentioning names of drugs is it very expensive to treat tuberculosis how expensive can it be tuberculosis is very expensive very to expensive very expensive to treat but <laughs> the <laughs> thing is in nigeria we have people that we have partners we have the government okay we have developmental partners people that are partnering because even in the advanced climb people that are supporting us they don't want us to bring those diseases to them so mm. they are supporting they are giving global fund mm. they are supporting with funds money you know pumping it into the tb eradication program so mm. that we have zero tb so they are pumping money so people get the drugs for the six months, the other whichever months they are taking the drug, whether it is for multi drug, they are dating them free. Even the test for TB two, the chest X ray, the sputum test, all those tests, the, those even the molecular test, they are done free because mm. we want to uh, and we want to eliminate TB. You know, we want to have zero death from TB. Mm. So, though the is that somebody is paying for it, there's no free lunch anyway. Okay. Somebody, but somebody is paying for it. Mm. But the end, the people that are having the TB, they are not paying mm. because somebody somewhere is supporting. They are pumping fund into it so that people will not because of ah the treatment is high. That's why I'm not taking the drugs. Okay. So when you go to any any facility, the treatment is supposed to be free. The test is also supposed to be free. When you say any facility, is it inclusive with uh, private hospitals as well? Well, yeah, some private or hospitals. just the public hospitals. Yeah, general. well, private, some private hospitals too. It's supposed to be free. Even when you go to any private hospital, if they know they, they you know some of them say they say they are running business. Mm. But if you know you are running, just refer them to any public hospitals where they will obtain their treatment free. There is no need for you to be imposing again collecting money from people for somebody for a, a drug that you're for a disease that you're going to treat for a long time. Mm. When you know that you can always assess the treatment. For as long free. as six months. Yes, or even more depending on Or the even more. Yes. It could be more than six months. Yes, for the MDR. 
Wow. Yes. So that means you have to direct the person to the right place where the person will get the right treatment. Mm. But some can, some private hospitals, if they have good working relationship with the health facilities, they can be getting the, even the patient is supposed to get the drug close to wherever they are because we don't even want them to be, even, we don't want them to spend much money because mm. even despite that they are even getting the drug free, it has been said according to research that 20% of their income still, you know, still goes into that kind of treatment because they need to eat early maybe they need to transport themselves maybe mm. not far away from where mm. they get it so it, it affects the family mm. one way or the other and they have to always come for treatment checks up and mm. all of that for mm. that mm. six months or more yeah now t- tell us tell us how accessible is this free treatment for tuberculosis you know when you say uh it's in most cases always very free and we know this is nigeria of course dr yetunde uh, when they say something is free we hear of free education and it's not even free anymore <laughs> so when you say the treatment for tuberculosis is free how accessible is it take for instance general hospital we could do have there been cases of people with tuberculosis that were treated for free and they did not really need to spend much yes the treatment is free anywhere in Nigeria and it's accessible it's accessible because the even reason we, I'm asking this question yes. Dr. Yutunde some people will tell you it is free uh, but uh, the 10 people that we are supposed to attend to they are already complete so from you now number 11 to number no, 20 you have to pay one there thing there is nothing thing. like that the okay. treatment is free even the thing we even try to reduce that cost I'm talking about is the cost of maybe uh, uh, these other spendings that the person may attach to it but the test is free mm. the drugs are free mm. even when somebody comes to you could do general hospital and the place the blessing is living is far. Mm. We have other centers. We have even community centers are around. Great. We even have people that are even there are some cases of TB patients that we have people who are going to go and give them their drugs in their house. Wow. They don't need to leave their house, especially <laughs> for people who <laughs> those multi drug resistance. Mm. They won't give them stipends so that they will take their drug. Mm. Yeah. So did you, can I imagine giving you some money so that you can eat money uh, giving you the drug? So that we want to eradicate TB, mm. eliminate TB. Mm. So the treatment is free. They are even giving them stipends to uh, <laughs> So it's free. Mm. Anybody that wants to collect money for TB, the person should report. The body should uh, collect money from anybody for a uh, drug for TB. Mm. Okay, you've heard that uh, from a doctor in the studio, Dr. Yetunde Odusolu, saying that a treatment for tuberculosis is actually totally free. One or two more calls will come in, and of course, we will call it a day on the issues today. Hello to you. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Yes, good morning. We're still in yeah, the morning. Good morning. What am I saying afternoon? Maybe the yeah. sun is so shining over there. <laughs> Hello. <it's the> <laughs> I'm so sorry you're calling back. Yes, please. Um, our doctor has done a fantabulous job. Thank you. He has highlighted everything that the public needs to know about sleeping. Mm. But also, um, prevention, I just want to add to everything that she has said. Yes, please. Most times when sleeping patients are on medication, mm. some of them felt that uh, I can be using this about uh, drugs that what we call that book, mm. that it will fast track most of these things. Mm. Then, no matter no ma, when you're on medication for TB, you're supposed to do away with anything that has to cause the liver double work. Breathing, mm-hmm. ago, drinking, drinking alcohol, all sorts of things that will put pressure on the liver and the lungs. Mm-hmm. But most times we find that people on medication will just be like, let me continue using the normal lifestyle that I use. Knowing fully where that what CB comes into anybody's life, mm. all these things will change. His idea will change. Most of doing things will definitely change. I give an instance. Sometimes we normally do lectures when we want to go and collect our CB drugs. Then we get to know that if you might not have that money to eat a elaborate food, so you can buy a smoked fish, um, vegetable, mix it, then that's good to go. For TV to work, you need to help ourselves. We need to help ourselves as an individual. Mm. Things that they tell us at the clinic that do away with, we should do away with it. Because like I said, like she said, this thing kills faster than HIV, than mm. other things. Smaller or later, the lungs will be eating. And before you know, the lungs are using that power to do anything again. The person will just collapse and at the end of it. At least I'm a witness, uh, living with this. At least I've left the clinic for almost like 15, 20 years ago. Mm. But if it makes me to know something, mm. how to manage my life, how to go about, facilitate about me. Before I had it, mm. I just feel my life like 
not to know that I can't cash anything. Once I have it, I was like, how did I get this thing? So I started washing us, even after my medication. You can't come beside me. I'll just say, you, okay, please use your cash. That's why it's made for. And I myself, I prevent a lot of things. Thank God for bringing them to us. At this year, she has showed more light to us. The less that I'm not here about please. Uh, thank you, yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Yeah, yes, Mr. Yes, Larry, before you go, I want to ask you, when you uh, had this uh, deadly disease, tuberculosis, during the time of your treatment, was it free for you? Yes, it was. It was a free treatment? It was a free treatment. Because okay. Early in the morning, they do something for us. They do lectures for us. You know what this makes us like? Who hmm. will be the one um, educating ourselves? Meaning that they will just, like, Every Monday now, they do lectures. They raise this. You will be the one training each other. They will leave you to be educating the rest. And doing that, we discover a lot of things within ourselves. A lot of people that are older than me, they still smoke and drink. I'll be the one to like, ah, sorry, this thing is wrong. Your liver is getting damaged, little by little. Although some are late, though. For me, I'm a living, uh, living testimony. Nothing after that. And I'll be able to manage myself from that. Mm. i now. Thank you very much, Mr. Right, Larry. Bro. Thank you so very much for that uh, contribution. Uh, I like the fact that this is a living testimony, just like he has said. I almost said <laughs> hallelujah, but then <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Now, uh, when we say that uh, tobacco, okay, uh, let me take this course, please. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. This is Mrs. Adekoya from Ebute. How are you doing today, I Mrs. Adekoya? Uh, yeah, Mrs. Adekoya from Ebute. How are you doing I today? To, I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Ah, I just want to say a big thank you to Dr. Yesunde for the brilliant lectures he has just given us. Mm. I really, really thank her. More grace to her help. Thank you, thank very, you much. very much. Thank you very much, much for calling. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you. Okay, uh, so I'm also saying thank you too as well uh, to join mommy on that one. So when we talk about you saying uh, it's very expensive but then it is free, now let's look at uh, how they are supposed to live their lives. You know, we talked about the things they are supposed to do especially for good hygiene you know when people have um, some particular kind of uh, illnesses diseases uh, bacteria and all of that they tell them this is what you eat this is what you do this is where you're not supposed to go this is what you're supposed to take this quantity and all for somebody with tuberculosis what are the uh, measures at which this person is supposed to live when we talk about good hygiene what to eat what not to eat what to drink and what not to drink well the person just just attempt to live healthy Mm. and maintain good nutrition they should avoid junk foods junk um, foods yeah, yes high foods that are highly saturated in fats you know then they should avoid caffeine limit their caffeine intake mm. of course limit even limit alcohol if they don't want if they don't want to stop but it's advisable they stop you should stop smoking then they should eat plenty of fruits and vegetables fruits. yeah because they have been said that vitamin c even the, because it's present in fruits and vegetables mm. it also helps in immobilizing that bacteria that is responsible for tuberculosis mm. even and helping the drugs to kill it so they should eat plenty of fruits and vegetables eat high protein diet you know because some of them is because of malnutrition so they need to eat, eat protein you know so that they can build up their immune system so that they can fight the disease mm. so they need to eat well lastly lastly before we go i want us to talk about stigmatization we talked about it earlier but i need us to as a doctor i need you to orientate uh, uh, those listening out there most of the times when these cases happen uh, you see people try to run away uh, from those people with uh, tuberculosis they just have that mindset or that belief that i know i don't want to uh, be infected with your disease i don't want to be infected with your tuberculosis uh, for now maybe you just have to stay away uh, some people will tell you just go and get an apartment and all what do you have to say to people who does this people who uh, do not give that uh, welcoming hand uh, to those with tuberculosis and what should be done when you know that someone around me has tuberculosis and yet i have to be careful too what do we have to say about stigmatization when we talk about tuberculosis uh, well, uh, well i would say that we should avoid stigmatizing those who have tb disease because anybody can have the tb disease i wouldn't have the colleague that had the tb disease mm. a doctor having the tb disease so a doctor not, yeah so we should not stigmatize anybody with the, with the disease though you should be careful you know observe preventive measure maybe we need to wear masks you know mm. especially when people are going to the clinic you ask them they are still in the active phase 
you know they are prone to you know coughing and we still releasing the bacteria they should cover their face with face masks mm. you know spray and when they are coughing they should maintain respiratory hygiene in the house if you have somebody that has tb with you you can and of course maybe in the first one or two weeks you can make them stay in another room okay. so that you not be staying in the same room with them mm. but not as if you now for it's just for a while okay. it's not something that will now be prolonged that will now be stigmatizing because even if anything okay i said people stigmatize still stigmatize TB. Mm. Even healthcare, among some healthcare workers, they still stigma. TB. Don't come here. Mm. Don't be, uh, mm. But yet, they are not infectious again. They are not no longer uh, producing the bacteria into the air that can, you know, infect people. Mm. But because they have labeled them as TB, people still stigmatize them. Mm. Yet, these people, they are no longer infectious. They are no longer a risk to the community. Mm. So, we should accept them. We should let them feel love. That's why people, some people hide. Because if you have got this stigmatizing disease, so they don't want to come out, out for treatment. Mm. And of course, they are doing themselves because at the end of the day, the thing gets worse and they may lead to their death. So let people come out, let them let them get tested when they are coughing and they should get their treatment on time. Mm. So when you are treated on time, make sure you adhere to your regimen very well so that you get properly treated and get properly cured. Okay, before you leave now, uh, I want to talk about, uh, you talked about uh, some of the symptoms uh, that is seen uh, with a person with tuberculosis, mm. coughing, weight loss, uh, fever, uh, night sweat, and all of that. Now, when these things happen and people see it, what should be the first thing to do? Originally, I know you would say just go to the hospital, but some people will just feel like, just like I said, let me see if this thing will go. Let me take my time. When is that duration? At what time exactly does it become so terrible? Because some people just say, let me stay a day or two days. Is it still fair at that time? Let me see if this is really tuberculosis, even after these symptoms are already uh, manifesting. There's no need to waste time because once you diagnose it early, you are trying to limit the spread of the infection and you are limiting the damage that the infection can cause in your body. Mm. So once you know that you are having this, those symptoms that we have said is associated with TB, go to your healthcare provider on time, you know, and like, let them test you properly. And if it is diagnosed, found that it is TB that you have, let them start you on treatment immediately. It's mm. not something that you need to do delay for a long time though it's not a dog it's not something that you want to do emergency with but at the same time it's better to treat it properly on time mm. yeah. but when we come to let's let's come yeah. down home now when we talk about Ikorodu General Hospital, what's the accommodation like for people with tuberculosis? Is it because we know that, okay, there might be a lot of people to attend to. Are there special uh, 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 spaces that, okay, this is for tuberculosis, come this way, or they just need to follow the same queue and uh, yes. uh, procedures as every other person? Uh, when they come into the General Hospital Ikorodu, and we have people that we call cough officers. Cough officers? Uh, yes, they are being supported by partners. Too. Okay. So they, are, they, they, they work in it because they also they are they are performance driven mm. because you have to produce you have to bring people that have TB TB is in the community so yes. they are looking for them mm. so they once the people come you know in our triage area they ask them is anybody coughing once they ask and if somebody that is coughing mm. they give the person cough yeah produce put them and if mm. the person has come to see the doctor and the doctor has you know further evaluated or asked the patient question and said this is tended towards TB yeah, it's tended towards TB mm. they will direct the person to the chest clinic to go and do to, to see doctor and do some further test and this this molecular test that we talk about gene expert you ask yes. them to do it you may ask them to do what we call skin test maybe a man too and all that test that may know that may corroborate or support the diagnosis of tb but this putting test is very important mm. yes so once they diagnose that and we'll find that that is like the first yes, uh, yes. step yes and also when you know i mentioned that there's a there's a chest x-ray that is free too. Yes, they yes. do that one too. Yes. Based on the scoring of that uh, chest x-ray. Because that the machine also scores. So you know whether the person is is it TB or not. And mm. with all that symptoms married together, we commence the person on treatment immediately. You've heard uh, from Dr. Yetunde Odusolu, and of course, you already know that tuberculosis is a deadly disease. Uh, uh, according to records, the major specific record for 2021, it has said that uh, over 1.6 million persons died due to tuberculosis. However, it's important for us to stay safe out there. Your parting words to our listeners out there, especially those living currently with tuberculosis. Uh, well, we just encourage them that they should adhere to their treatment regimen 
make sure that they take those drugs well so that they don't come down with a uh, uh, resistant CB. Mm. And for those who don't have, make sure you live well, live healthy, mm. so that you and make sure you avoid overcrowding, you know, so that you don't get exposed to TB. I want to say thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Yetunde Odusolo from mm. Ikorodu General Hospital, uh, a consultant, public health physician. Thank you so very much for your time. And of course, it's good to see you again. Mm. Please, my warm regards to the staff and management of I, um, um, uh, Ikorodu General Hospital. This is coming mm. from IKD 106.1 FM. Uh, uh, yes, and tell, uh, tell, tell, tell DMD that we've not seen the birthday cake. It's, okay, it's, 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 it's days now. <laughs> this okay. is how far we can have it uh, on the issues. My name is Okpayami at Day Bambo. Please stay safe out there. Remember that your health is your wealth. And of course, it's a very, very important for you to stay safe whenever you have anything at all. Please feel free uh, to walk into any of the general hospitals around you, especially that of Ikorudu. This is how far we can have it. The issues continues tomorrow with Victor Achibong. My name is Okpayami at Day Bambo, urging you to have a safe, safe day ahead of you. It's a bye for now.